Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm tired. I'm tired, but I'm here. I'm doing well. I yes. am excited because I'm taking the afternoon off, not to rub it into you or anybody else, but it's happening. And uh, that makes me very glad. Not I... because I'm going to work, but because as, as I was mentioning earlier, I don't want to be at work and feel resentful, wishing that I had taken the afternoon to put my plants in the garden. So I will say on a beautiful day like this, where when you see the sunshine and it's not hot, it's, it's that perfect temperature. These are the days when I'm really, really glad that I work in a basement with no windows because right. I don't see the outside you don't know. and what I'm missing. You don't know, you know what you're missing out on, and it's just better. That it's easier that way. You don't feel right. so resentful and right. regretful. <laughs> yes, because if I had to see what I was missing, it'd be real hard. <laughs> I know. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tracy and Mary and Carrie. Oh, what a... What a similar right? of names. <laughs> That's awesome. I, uh, Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. Are you seeing people comment? I am. Are you not? I see Liz. That's that's the only one I see. Well, that's weird. The joys of V Live. <laughs> Live programming. Awesome. Well, I'll keep you up to date. Um, All right. I will make sure that I. What they say. <laughs> Speaking of putting stuff outside, we also um, are going to be getting some things into our garden at Northwest um, this coming week. So that will be good, too. Uh, Audrey says she could not work without windows because the light would kill her eyes. OK, the light, yeah. the internal indoor yes. light. I, I know that the fluorescents really bother her. And I do see Liz says apparently she's the only one who matters. And <laughs> I'm sorry to say, Liz. Tara and Audrey have also popped up for me to see. Maybe so there was a delay. no longer all, alone. All the rest of them came in at 1030, according to the comment list. So I wonder mm -hmm. if maybe there was just a delay in you getting. Probably because you're the host and I'm the guest. That could be. Working it out on air. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there someday. Oh. And also for the first time this morning, it informed me that I needed I to see. accept except pop-ups. So I don't know, every week they have done, you know, they could have done updates that have changed things. We're just happy to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like the one week when we couldn't be here, this is much better. Right. Tracy had a question. Is this about the kids reading program? Not today. This presentation is not. I Do we have a, one coming about summer reading? Uh, we, we could do that. That would be an excellent idea. But I can tell you that it starts, um, beginning of June, we are starting with summer reading as always. And <clears throat> you can find out more information <clears throat> and call the library. We'll get you, let you know what's happening, get you signed up for that yeah. once, once that starts. Yeah, we'll, we'll have an app this year, but it's a different app than we used last year because we didn't like the one we had last year. So all kinds We're of trying to figure things. it out. <laughs> Yeah. We're still trying to figure out how to how to how to do it the best we can, you know, this year. But yeah, June first. So please, uh, yeah. This and when the library commented, this is just our weekly bookish chat about <laughs> uh, things we're reading and things we want to read, and who knows what else. So thank you for joining us this morning. But um, it's not going to be specifically about summer reading. Yeah. It's going to be about romance novels in part today. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you going to say? I was going to say, do you want to tell us what you're reading right now? You tell us first because I have to remember. I am reading the third book in the um, Timber Creek Canine series um, by Margaret Mizushima. This one is called Hunting hour. Last week I was reading book two. This week nice. I'm reading book three. <laughs> nice. Because that's what I do. I dive in and I do all of them at once. Yeah. Um, or as much of them as I can. <clears throat> as many of them as I can. Sorry, yeah. I got a little in my throat this morning. Um, I'm really enjoying her books. Mm -hmm. um, and the love story that's blossoming kind of sort of between the detective and the, the town vet. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Because she's got a dog, so of course she's got to go to the vet, right? Right. So, um, <clears throat> but somehow every 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 book he winds up part of the mystery also, and so it just kind of 
helps them build their relationship. So I'm really enjoying this series, even though it's like a mystery series, there's that element of romance that's slowly yes. there. So it kind of even fits this week's theme. And I know you definitely like 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 to have a little bit of that. Yes. yes. Or a lot of that. Or a lot of that. But you know, yeah. <laughs> um I have been I've been like back and forth between different things, which is why I wasn't sure I could remember my most recent audiobook I already finished and have not started a new one. And then I mentioned last week I was going to be reading that novel reprieve about the full contact, um, full contact like escape room yes. thing. And I began it, but I, I didn't get a chance to get very far with it. I know I mentioned I was going to a wedding over the weekend. It was wonderful. I was out of town all weekend. I saw my family that I haven't seen since basically last Christmas, you know, yeah. uh, 2019 Christmas. Um, and it was just really wonderful to see everybody. And I just didn't, I did not stay caught up on my reading as I normally do. Um, I've also been reading, um, I've been reading some comics. I just haven't, I haven't been, I haven't been keeping up. So I, it was an off week. And Tracy um, says that she's re reading J.D. Robb. Oh, nice. Anybody else wants to share what they're reading? I yeah, would anybody to share. Oh, Liz had asked me last time we were on if I had read the book that you recommended, um, A Bad Day for Sunshine by Dorinda, Dorinda Jones. Jones. Um, I read it. It's wonderful. It's, it's a detective story. And, um, uh, but like the character is, she's hilarious and I can't wait to spend more time in this town because it's a whole town of wackadoos. Um, <laughs> and there's like I'm some serious. very supernatural, not supernatural, but some like special powers, like suggestions of mm -hmm. like f future telling or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Like the one, the one, the <laughs> One of the, it's very early in the book, so I'm not really giving anything away. Um, there, there, what a person in town delivers muffins to the to the police station, and all the police are like, they're like, she's like, what's going on? And they're like, muffins means things are about to go cray cray, and. <laughs> she's like, what? They're like, the more muffins, the worse it is, and uh, yeah. So there's a little that that person's a little bit psychic. I mean, uh, but just the the characters are hysterical. The mom's relationship with her daughter, they are so funny. Like the way they they interact, it's like she's very much the mom, but they're very obviously really good friends too. They're jokey. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just I can't like I said I can't wait to spend more time in this town with these crazy cast of characters. That's great. I'm so glad you liked it, and that yeah. was one I picked because it was a mystery. So I knew you had listed that, but it was also it was the quirky characters was part of why I picked that one. We got lots of comments happening. We do. Here, Can you see them all? Bridgerton and finds it hysterical. Um, and Liz said the next one comes out soon. Is she talking about the next? I think during the show. Yeah. Ooh, awesome. I can't wait. Um, it's also the same world as her other series. Oh, I, I haven't read her other series. I need to. So, but, <clears throat> and like I was pulling holds for a book club kit for some, not a book club kit. Take that back. A subscription bundle for someone. And I was like, if you like these books, because there were some of the books that I liked, I'm like, you're gonna like this author. So I started her on the other her other Great. series. <laughs> Good. Um, and Tracy says it's uh, JD Robb's in death series, which I think I just books in that series. I like, think I just ordered the next one. Mm -hmm. Like that isn't coming out yet. Yesterday yeah. I did a large order that Leah had sent me. Very um, large order. It Sorry was very that. large. Um, had to spend some time with our uh, library software spinning as I was as I was doing that order, um, which was not Leah's fault. That was the library software's fault, but it was large. Um, and I think that the newest book on that was in that series was on that order. Tara says she read Beach House by Jenny Hale, and it was a good read. And Audrey has about five kids books going now. Um, <laughs> Tracy says she's listening to a lot of hers, and I will tell you, I am an audiobook listener. I love audiobooks, so I'm right there with you. And Melanie said it sounded a bit like Midnight Texas by Charlene, Charlene, Charlene Harris. I 
want to read that that series. That one sounds really good. I haven't gotten there yet. Um, Leah, they aren't connected. There was just a nod with the bartender. Oh, okay. Um, it was cute, which I probably would have picked up had I read the other series. But um, Tracy says her eyesight is bad and she can't read the paperback. Um, she misses having a book in her hand. Well, you can always hold a book and listen. <laughs> <laughs> nothing stopping you <laughs> yeah it's great to have audiobooks as an option or um if you ever got into it the e-readers um because you can enlarge the font on those and i don't know if that would help or not but lee and i have actually talked about that on here before how we like using an e-reader because you can just make the font as generously sized as you'd like um Do you notice how close i'm getting to the screen today i'm, <laughs> I'm wearing my contacts not my glasses so i don't have my bifocal <laughs> So, we understand. <laughs> and Liz says that I would like the Midnight Texas series. Oh, and so and, and Tracy likes it, and Melanie likes it too. Well, there I you go. Have to give it a try. There you go. My next, my next series. Right after continuing with Dorinda Jones. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's great. This has been a fun chat about what everybody is reading. Yeah. I love knowing what other people I are reading. I love when we talk about books and like what everyone is reading because I always get recommendations mm -hmm. and there's always that like, it's like it's been at the bottom of the to read pile that suddenly it's like, okay. It bumps it up. <laughs> yes. Well, I actually, today we said we were going to talk about romances um and i know we've talked about like paperback romances before and we've talked about you and becky talked about romances but it's been a while so we're going to talk about romances again there's so many different kinds and yes types of romances that are out there and but speaking like to segue into that speaking of things that were on your to be read pile did you end up reading that get a life chloe brown is that what the one you were going to read yes I, I did read Get a Life Chloe Brown. I, I haven't like read it. the other two sisters book, books yet, okay. but I did read Get a Life Chloe Brown. It was like really it. good. I okay. really liked it. Um, okay. Trying to think of the author's name. Oh, I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. Talia Hibbert, I think. Sure. I Why didn't check me. <laughs> A lot of times I scribble incoherently um, things down and I can't read it, but I didn't even scribble that. So I'm not sure. But um, I asked about that because the romances that I I read and listen to, um, I'm not like a super dedicated romance reader, but I do. I like rom-coms. We had our we had our Hallmark movie discussion at Christmas time. I like basically books that are like rom-coms. So I like romantic. Yes contemporary romance where it's funny and there's other stuff going on and but the, the primary story is a romance but not mm -hmm. historical romance and not paperback romance and not like cowboys or motorcycle clubs but just your contemporary Don't you on the cowboys and motorcycle club i know i'm not i'm not i'm just saying that those are not the ones that i read i have read carolyn brown before i read carolyn brown she is like cowboy central that was the first paperback romance I ever read. I read it in library school <laughs> um, as an example of a romance. <laughs> um, all right, we've got more comments. Yes, Talia Hibbert, that's her name. She okay. Get a life nice. Brown. And uh, looks like Tara listened to that book. She needs to listen to the other two. Um, going back to the Stackhouse novels by Charlene Harris. They became that True Blood on HBO. It says and they're being injured. Melanie, she read South of the Buttonwood Tree by Heather Weber. I've not even heard of that one. I think Tara so, read that and really, really liked it. Okay, I will have to add that to my list. Her um, next book is coming out in July. Ooh. Yeah, I think Tara really liked that one. Um, I've not read any of these and I I actually read the Dorinda Jones. I read A Bad Day for Sunshine and I did not like it, but that's fine. It is, it's it's not my type of book. I was just trying to like expand a little bit and be like, yeah. what what is this type of book like? And I and I made it through, but it was that was the only is gonna be the only one. But um yeah. so that's that's how I knew about the psychic thing and the muffins. And I remember the bartender as well. There's like a suggestion that he like he knows what's up and everything. So yeah. So. Um, all right. Well, 
you want to go ahead and talk about your reading I'll start. experiences? I'll start. My um, when I was saying that I read <laughs> rom com style um, romances, the way I described it to Leah is that in the past couple of weeks, I've been on a kick. I read four pastel books, and that's how I described it because the covers are pastel. And I read a, an article recently about romance, contemporary romance, and how the covers, the trend in the covers now, is being very cartoonish, not mm -hmm. real people cartoon people and these kind of either primary or pastel colors just sort of blocked. And you don't know what is going to be inside. Based on that cover, you do not know, is this going to be a story of two friends, one whose husband dies, the other whose husband leaves her, and they take this trip to Paris together and maybe there's a romance throughout, but it's really about the friends? Or is it like an R-rated romance? Yes. And you can't tell from the cover at all. The, the covers have gone very much into the style of chiclet covers mm -hmm. because chiclet have always had those cartoonish covers with the the pretty colored mm -hmm. covers um i think the the colors on the romance novels right now are more bold mm -hmm. like you're describing them as pastel but there's a lot of like teal and the, a pink very much like in your your shirt the pink and the purple like they're mm -hmm. like <clears throat> Some of them are pastel, but and or all and yellow. mine were pastel. They were like robin's egg blue, lavender purple, pink. Yeah. Um, the ones but I personally like, read, but you're right. But like I even I just Googled romance books 2021, mm -hmm. and like there's this whole row at the top of yeah. just these 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 book covers, and they're like two with real people on the cover. And I'm like, yes, they're depart they're cover yes. department is not up on the latest trend. Clearly but. not. And <laughs> some of that, and that makes it hard for me to do my job personally, mm -hmm. um, to know if something should go on romance or not, to know whether or not there is, is it just a thread of romance throughout, which does not actually make something a romance book? Mm -hmm. Or is it truly a romance? And you don't want to disappoint people thinking they're going to get one thing and they, they're not. Um, and so it makes it hard for me to do my job. But one of the things that, that makes it easier for is people who are reading the book out in public um <laughs> yeah if it's you not know, a bodice know, ripper cover <laughs> exactly you don't have that 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 cover like with the people embracing or right. you know, it's not very obviously a romance novel which, yeah. which is nice if you're <laughs> public handed or right. i mean and plenty of people don't care I, and I certainly don't care, but just that's something that in the world of romance readers gets yeah. brought up a lot. A lot of romance readers read ebooks. Um, and it's not only because of covers, but if you're going to have that cover of the motorcycle guy and he's shirtless <laughs> and all of that, and you're, at, you're on your lunch break at work, you might prefer to use an e reader. Some people yes. might. Yeah. Um, so that seems to be the trend in covers, which <laughs> is definitely the books that I read in the past few weeks. Yeah, I, I, I love the covers now. Like they just, I don't know. Just, you know, seeing like the, the, the real people on the covers, I don't, I don't, I didn't really like those. Like yeah. I much prefer the, the tar cartoon covers that, that are popular right yeah. now. Yeah, and you can use your imagination a little bit more to decide, mm -hmm. you know, what people look like and how they are rather than yeah. that. Um, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and I'll say one of the books I read was, um, I actually listened to this one. It was the X Talk, um, which you had said you were going to read. I checked out twice and never got through it. Yeah, never got and through I told it. her, I wanted to talk to her about it. And then she's like, oh, I didn't read it. Um, the, the author, Rachel Lynn Solomon, I think. It's an S and then a scribble. Um, and it is about a public radio producer named Shay and a public radio, radio reporter named Dominic who have to pretend to be exes for a dating show that their their radio station is trying to do as a last-ditch last ditch effort to save their station because they're probably going to go under. So getting high ratings on this is important, and they need to pretend to be exes to host this dating show because apparently being exes is very important to the concept of the show. And... Um, this was fine for me, but it was a lot of contrivances and I, I don't know. And it, the audio was really good. She does great voices and it's important when you're listening to a romance novel that the voice isn't, isn't creepy and it's yeah. not boring. And, you know, cause you gotta, you gotta read like these love scenes and it's gotta, gotta be not weird. Right. Um, and so she had a great voice for it. 
Um, and I would say this is probably one of the more like our level romances or whatever, but you wouldn't be able to tell it from the cover. Um, and, but for me, like I said, there was a lot of contrivances. And when I get to like two thirds of the way through the book and the main thing is just like, oh, someone just can't tell him how she feels because she's certain he doesn't feel the same way. Even though when she's talking about something and he gets a strange look on his face and it's very obvious that he's taken aback by her not liking him because he likes her and it's clear to everybody. I feel like you just ran out of ideas and you need to have a, another thing come up that's actual plot rather than someone just not being willing to speak to somebody else about their feelings. I don't, I don't like that. There's always you get two thirds of the way through the book and there's some kind of problem that has to be right. solved. They have to overcome to realize right. that they Right. And I understand it's important to have to have to overcome those things, but I think it's lazy if the thing that they're overcoming is someone just being like, Well, I'm afraid to tell him I can't do casual, so I'll just make up something about how <laughs> it's something else and hurt his feelings that way. I don't really have a lot of patience for that, but yeah. I do understand they need to overcome something together. And I'm all for that. I, I hate when it's just like, if you would just talk to each other, yes. like this problem yes. doesn't exist. I, I think not, that's one of those, it like reinforces yeah. in the reader that talking about issues is yes. like really the, the solution to the problem. Yes. So maybe, and that, yes. Maybe it's fair to encourage you to be more open in your expression. <laughs> and that maybe, but that's what it is. And it's not like I am the best with uncomfortable or difficult conversations. That's a, certainly a, is a challenging thing. But like, even I can see how <laughs> things are going to become worse and not better. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the reading was good. The story was unique. You know, I hadn't, hadn't heard that story before. I feel like the main characters were a very clear match. Um, it wasn't, you know, so I do, I still would say if you're into the rom-com thing, go for it, but expect some, some of those more contrived. Yes. There's always got to be some kind of right. contrived. There's, yeah. It just, it just, it just is. It is. Um, I'm going to talk about a book that I haven't read yet, but that I can't wait to read. Um, Casey McQuist McQuiston's um, One Last Stop. Um, there's a girl meets another girl on a train and like she's awesome and like kind of just thinks that she's like in retro clothes like but turns out she's time traveled. Like mm -hmm. I don't know much more about the story but I can't wait to read this one. That sounds right up your alley. Right? Time tra traveling romance. How much better can right. it get? But Casey McQuiston wrote um, Red, White, and Royal Blue, mm -hmm. which if you haven't read, is really good, and I really like it. Um, it's <laughs> the president of the United States son falls in love with uh, a, the English, the Prince of England. So, like, they have mm -hmm. a secret relationship, and it causes, like, diplomatic issues and, like... He gets kicked off his mother's campaign because there are worries about mm -hmm. it's just, like it's fabulous and um they it's there's a lot of texting back and forth and I mm -hmm. love when um you know there are those like written exchanges between people mm -hmm. but they also include um lines from letters between um other people, other mm -hmm. people's letters, which I think I don't know. I just enjoy right. that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was really interesting and really, um, you know, you think, oh, wow, must be awesome being the prince. But, you know, there are all kinds of restrictions on your life and you can't just right. do what you want to do. So, right. it, you know, but it was it was really well written and funny. And the characters are just were just so likable. Oh, in good. Her last book that I can't wait. Cannot wait for her next book. So good. it's like way up there on my reading list. That's awesome. Well, you'll have to report back to us when you've read it. Yes, I will definitely. Um, my next one is called Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. And I bring this one up next uh, because of what we had been talking about. In this one, April and Marcus both write fan fiction um, on AO3 about their favorite 
fantasy show, which is, it's like Game of Thrones basically, um, except it's based on the Aeneid. Um, and so they both write fan fiction about that, but they both don't really tell anybody about it. She doesn't tell anyone because she does cosplay and everything. And she just like, doesn't want to be like made fun of at work and have it be this whole thing. And then he doesn't tell anyone because he is an actor on the show. So oh, okay. if that were to come out, he hates the direction the show is taken because there are only a few books out. There's, they have to finish the show without the original source material. And he does not like the direction that the directors and writers took it. And so he writes fan fiction that like, you know, corrects well, that. He'd like to see it go. And so, yes. And so because he is, you know, contractually bound and everything, if it were to come out that he would write this, he feels like his career is on the line. Um, and so they, but they know each other through this discord server. And um, then the circumstances align so that they meet one another in real life. But because they've just met, he doesn't feel comfortable revealing that that's, he finds out who she is, but he doesn't feel comfortable revealing who he is because he doesn't know if she might, you know, she, he doesn't know if he can trust her to not tell people that. Um, and so that's an example of a con contrivance and a hidden secret that at least made sense to me. Like why, yes, you know, how yeah. that led into it. And these characters, the other reason why I liked this one is because these characters, um, they, they have dealt with their stuff. They're not going into this with like, well, if you would just do this, if you would just do that, they're pretty yeah. aware of what their faults and flaws are so that like, you don't spend a lot of time in the book, like working through that. I like that. And I liked that about this book. They already kind of know who they are and what they want. And it's not that there aren't obstacles for them to overcome and even personal obstacles, cause there are, but you don't spend a lot of time like being dragged down by like, stuff that they need to figure out on their own yeah. and so this one I definitely uh did enjoy um I believe she has another one coming out in the coming year maybe or so um but it's called spoil spoiler alert by Olivia Dade keeping with that kind of theme um Annabeth Albert has got um I'm really excited for the second book in her in the series she's got several series out i love all of them um she writes gay romances um mm -hmm. which i know is weird but hey whatever um she's got her new her new series out like the first one was conventionally yours and there are these two um gamers who are going to a gaming convention and um it's one of those they know each other, but they kind of hate each other and they grow to like each other on the road trip. Um, and the game is really important. Mm -hmm. enemies, to the enemies to lovers trope. Yes, enemies to lovers trope. Um, and she's got another book in that series coming out, um, out of character. And there are again, characters at like a comic con mm -hmm. type convention. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I really like her characters. Mm -hmm. um, they just seem like really likable people. Yeah. And there's always an issue that they're struggling with to overcome, but they're just, yeah. I don't know. They're just sweet stories with characters yeah. that I really feel for. Um, yeah. So she's one of those authors that I, I enjoy her books, even if it's two men, whatever. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, a romance is a romance and a right? lovely story is a lovely story. And we'll transition then into, um, Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. And this one, they're teenagers, this is a YA romance. So mm -hmm. again, you know, that's not my, necessarily my, um, not my age group, but uh, it was really, really cute and was very sweet and kind of the way you're describing it. It was just such a sweet story. And um, it's about Liz and Wes who grew up next door to one another and another kid from their neighborhood, Michael, he moved away and came back and Liz has always been secretly in love with Michael. And so she enlists Wes to help her like get Michael to notice her and to ask her to prom. Okay. But- so you are gonna talk about a different story. All right. Um, but surprise, in the course of that prom process, it turns out that maybe she and Wes yes. are the people who should be together. And <laughs> then added another layer to that, which just delights my heart and other people like me is that Liz is like this major fan of rom-coms in general. So there's all of these like acknowledgements and tropes and homages to 
romantic comedies. And it was just, it was a very nice teen romance, like 10 Things I Hate About You or something like that. Um, what is the name another, of that one? It's called Better Than the Movies. Okay. Um, I'm and, definitely adding that to my list. And even though, yes, there's that thing that happens. It was about three quarters of the way through the book. You know, the, the thing, they don't spend a ton of time. There's not a ton. No more time than necessary is spent on like her discovering maybe she has feelings for him or like the the process spent like people unintentionally hurting one another's feelings and things like that just it doesn't go on any longer than it absolutely needs to for the story yeah. to progress, which I appreciate. There of course is that. There has to be that. But um it's not you don't feel dragged through that either. And uh I I read it very quickly, like I just, you know, was powering through it on a weekend and I had to go do some yard work in between. And as I was mowing the yard, I was like, do you think they're going to get together? They're going to get together, right? They have to get together. I mean, of course they're going to get together, but I just couldn't stop thinking about them. <laughs> I love those books that, that are like that, that you're just like, you just feel like so invested in their relationship. I know. You can't wait to see, like, you know, of course they're going to get together. How right. is it going to happen? Right. Like, what's going to be the thing that like pushes it over the edge? Yes, and then I'm just like so waiting for like that last chapter where they, you know, depending on different books, it's done differently. But like where they advance a yeah. year into the future, or you know, whatever. And I just can't wait to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I like that last chapter. It's like six months later, and they're like yes. your big, you know. It's just it's always so sweet, and I just I love that. It's I know. Yeah. Happy so, ending, man. You can't just, you can't beat it. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that I love about a romance is I know it's going to have a happy ending. Things are going to work out. Like yeah. it may be awful there in the middle or right. two thirds of the way through, you know, right. whatever it is that they have to struggle through. Yeah. It's going to work out. And like, I, I think there are some times that I read romances because I need to know that we're going to have that happy ending. Like, mm -hmm. especially especially when things are yeah in the world you know yeah. you just really want a happy ending i know i know yeah do you want to talk about another book i know because i know you've read a couple i did do you i mean if you want to i don't want to cut you off this is one of those things like i can talk about romance books like all the time yeah i, know. I didn't have any like i'm I will put together and post on the okay. discussion here a list of some of the forthcoming romances that I'm really that excited good. about, but I haven't read them yet. So that's like, fine. That I'm sounds good. Mine are at stuff that's coming out, but I haven't read it, so I don't feel like I can talk about it. Well, that sounds good, and I can include mine. We'll put another list. We'll have the forthcoming ones, and then we'll have because um, I did have a, a handful here. The only other one that I felt this is a series that I haven't read, but I was going to ask if you had, if you had read it, have you read anything from the bromance book club series? I started the first one. I, but then another book came in that right. had a waiting list. So I went and I read that. I know that Melanie has read. The, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, allowed to reveal in here that you've read this. But I totally, like, I got to the point where the, like the, the book club was like introducing a new character. They're yes. like, okay. You got to feel this way, and then we'll let you in on a little secret. <laughs> so, so, yes, the guys. The guys, the, the premise of this, the little line that I wrote down from Goodreads um, says, it's a secret book club made up of Nashville's top alpha men. I wrote that, that down in quotes, who are in this romance book club that's like a secret, and they read, like, you know, paperback romances. Um, and in the first one, anyway, you know, the man who joins the book club is going to try to learn how to like woo his wife back or whatever. And I then there's a series of them where different men in the book club, I suppose, use the book club to overcome their relationship things. And I just like that line about Nashville's top alpha men really made me chuckle. I, I just thought it was hysterical the way they're like, we're going to read romance books to find out how to be better at relationships. I know. <laughs> I just, I was, it was a wonderful premise. Liz and I says she did. It. And I'm so sorry that I didn't actually read it. Right. Liz says she didn't love it. Melanie says she did read the first one, but is not giving us any kind of assessment. You okay? <laughs> I almost spilled my coffee, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> well, great. So that might be one I'll have to have to look into because that just made me made me laugh. But we can post our um well, post our like, isn't it like the third one coming out this summer? Yeah, there, I think it's might be the third one. There's I think it's the third one, yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe during that time I'll pick up the first one and see. Um 
And then I also wanted to just make sure we mentioned the website allaboutromance.com because yeah. that has lots of reviews of, you can just type in a title, lots of like very seasoned romance readers reviewing books and they tend to give them like a, like a steam rating, I think. So you can also get an idea of what you're getting yourself into since yeah. as we said, and if there's no bodice ripping cover, sometimes you just don't know. Right? Yeah, that's, um, it's one of those, the covers are, can be very deceiving. And um, with with romance, there are like so many different genres as well. It's yes. like, you've got, you know, your bodice rippers. You're, yeah. You've been talking about contemporary romances this mm -hmm. morning. We haven't really ventured into anything else. But mm -hmm. um, if you're, I will mention one series that I love and it's less purely like brain candy. I love um, Jill Shalvis's Broken Harbor. Broken Harbor series, like I'm 90% sure that's that's the name of the series. It, in addition to like, you know, these, these couples finding romance, it, you encounter like the same townspeople over and mm -hmm. over again. And that's one of the things that I really love in a story is like getting to know those peripheral characters. <laughs> um, you know, you've got- yeah. like, the busybodies at the the old the old people in this town there are such busybodies and they get mm -hmm. into everyone's business and they have absolutely no sense of um respecting boundaries and they're yes. hysterical so like yeah it's one of those right. series that it just it speaks to me and i love yeah it. um i know we're over time but i just remember can i say what can i do one more yeah um this and the reason why I want to bring this up is because when I brought it and I showed it on the show once, it was a while back. It's called Confessions of a Curious Bookseller. And I read the back and I said, to me, this just sounds like you've got mail. So someone read this and tell me if it's just you've got mail. Well, I read it and it's not you've got mail. It's not you've got mail at all. And this is an example of a cover that was somewhat misleading. We did put it in fiction, which I'm glad about, but it is not a romance. There, it's not a romance. It just, but when you read the back, I feel like whoever wrote the back was just thinking, because there's a bookstore owner, there's a rival bookshop, the whole thing, which you might like this, the whole thing is um, it's emails, uh, Yelp reviews, not, uh, some of it is diary entry. And that's that's the most of the block text. Most of the rest of it is just emails and other forms of communication. And it's about, um, hi puppy. It's about a woman. Wanted some attention today. Wow. <laughs> Um, it's about a woman named Fawn who's in her 50s and she owns this bookshop that is failing and she just tries and she's just denying it. She's denying that it's not good and she writes these fake glowing Yelp reviews of her bookstore <laughs> and then she writes these fake terrible reviews of the other bookstore. She has a pen pal email exchange with somebody who she and she pretends she basically like she loves Downton Abbey and she like pretends that she lives on this estate with these horses and this email pen pal exchange she basically just pretends to be somebody else and she just really she's really in denial about the way things are going but it makes her extremely endearing and the whole book is written in that format and it's, like I said it's not a romance at all but it was another one of those pastel covered books that when I was in this mood I was like I'm gonna try this one this one should be like you've got mail and I read it and it wasn't but I loved it and it was really good and I would recommend that for people who like books about books books about reading and then that format where it's not na true narrative. It's it's yes. messages back and forth. So I, anyway, I love books guys. like that. Sorry, my dog needs a haircut. He's a little wild and shaggy. He's adorable. This is Kai. He Hi, just Kai. needed some attention. He was desperate oh, right out of camera, like to get my attention. Uh, but um, one of the books that's written like that that I love, and it's an old book. It's um, probably from the early aughts. <laughs> nice, <laughs> right? Um, Meg, Meg Cabot's uh, The Boy Next Door. Okay. It's a whole mistaken identity, mm -hmm. um, enemies to lovers story. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a guy is staying in his friend's apartment temporarily. And so the woman thinks he's the friend. And, and um, but they're actually like, rivals they, they work at rival newspapers and so like they have like these professional exchanges and then these personal exchanges and yeah. then like 
he figures out the truth, but she doesn't. And then when she finds out the truth, it's like you betrayed me. But well, of course, like, yeah. But it's like, well, here I just told her from the beginning who you are, but she never would have given him a chance because she hates him because she of hates him, so, right? But what she does she have? Yes. So, um, but that is one of those stories. Like, and there are texts like between her friends, and I think there's even at one point like a receipt that stuff is written on. Like, yeah, I just, love that. We love it. It's yes, you know, technology. So <laughs> keep that in mind if you go for the Meg yes. Habit one. Yes. Early aughts, not yes. iPhone days, but um right. But yeah. So that was that is one that I just absolutely love. The boy next door. Yeah. That's good to know. I'll I'll keep that one in mind too. I read The Princess Diaries mm -hmm. by Meg Habit, but I haven't read much else and I haven't read anything for adults. Um I mean, I've her. read several of her her books for adults. You ready to get down? Yeah. Bye Kyle. Um, <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, I've read several of her books for adults. She's one of those, and I never read The Princess Diaries because I was too old. You were too like, old. <laughs> I was I was too old for right. for those. Although I have read several of her other teen books that I yeah. really like, but she had like that vampire one, like the Insatiable. And okay. <clears throat> yeah, so she's got some good ones for adults that I really enjoy. Yeah, and actually, when I started reading these pastel books in the past couple weeks. I actually, this is shameful. I actually had The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue at my house. I had, she came out in for me right on time. And you know, like right when I was finishing this one project, and I was like, I can read this now. And I opened it up and I was like, I'm just not really in the mood for this. I'm in the mood for all these pastel books, so. Sometimes that's what happens. Yeah. But when you, so. Whenever you do get around to reading it, you're gonna like I put, it. I returned it, I put it on hold again. I returned it, so it'll come back to me eventually. <laughs> Eventually, yes. But I was just like, I want to make sure I can appreciate this, and I just want to read this fluff instead. <laughs> Sometimes fluff is what you need. So <laughs> that is a good note to end on. I agree, and we'll post our book list, and we'll be here again next week. But without, we have no plan right now, as of right now. So if there's anything you want to talk about or things you want to hear about, leave suggestions in the comments. Maybe we should talk about summer reading. Oh yeah, we can talk about summer reading. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, though. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you next week. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.